right, all right, are we good? Yeah. All right, so I am Micah Nordland. Um, I uh, am a full stack web developer. I work for a uh, small nonprofit uh, in Virginia and Percival. Uh, learning Python got me into programming, um, and I currently work as a full stack web developer. So uh, Matt Lehman uh, asked me to, uh, to come and ask me if I want to do my talk again, and uh, uh, this was basically my, uh, my uh, internal process. Um, uh, if you if you've seen Moana, that's probably my second favorite character from that movie. Um, that was a great scene. Um, so tonight we're talking about uh, web scraping, uh, specifically uh, the process of getting an HTML page, extracting data from it in a repeatable way, and storing it in the format of your choice. Um, now, not everybody may be familiar with completely how the web works. So um, I've got a uh, short primer here. Um, as everyone's seen, uh, sorry, I had a sore throat yesterday, so I'm probably going to lose my voice throughout this, but I think we'll be all right. Um, everyone's seen uh, Rogue One, right? Good, because this is a spoiler. Um, so. You recall that the Death Star plans were stored on a certain facility on Scarif, the planet, and the rebels needed to transmit them out, um, but the, the, the Empire was not particularly willing to let them do that. Uh, sometimes that can be a, an analogy for web scraping. Uh, you have data that you want to get out of somebody's server, but they don't really want to let you do that. Scrapey is a uh, Python library that lets you uh, Get that API, get that data out of their HTML um, into your uh, cruiser or database, or whatever that may be. Um, this is a diagram uh, from the Scrapey documentation. Um, there's lots more uh, diagrams like this. If you like diagrams on the documentation, uh, which is in a really small link down there at the bottom that you can't read, uh, but there will be it'll be uh, on the slide later of resources. Basically, um, you're responsible for writing uh, spiders um, that produce requests um, and items. And if you have some special requirements for how uh, you want the data to be stored, you might write your own item pip pipeline. Um, and I'll, I'll go into what all those are a little bit later. This is just a, a big overview of how Scrapey works. All right. So why should you use Scrapey? Um, there are a number of Python libraries for accessing uh, HTTP, the, uh, the very excellent request library. Um, if you're talking to HTTP and you're not using requests, you probably should be. Um, it makes everything easier. Um, but Scrapey does a lot more work for you than requests will. Um, it will, uh, building a comparable scraper uh, with requests versus uh, Scrapey, um, well, actually, I have the comparison right here. Um, I wrote one with requests and beautiful soup to do HTML parsing, and I came out to about 249 lines of code, um, but a scrapey crawler to do a uh, comparable task uh, came out to 71 lines. Um, and if you're quick with math, you can tell what that difference is. Um, but it's big. It's big. It's a lot less work to, a lot less thinking that you have to do to write a scrapey crawler. So, what is scrapey? Uh, it has uh, about four concepts that I'm going to go over. Um, there are projects, there are spiders, there are items, there are item pipelines. Um, it has a command line tool that you can use to create projects, um, and it'll sort of set up the structure for you, makes uh, starting a Scrapey project a lot simpler. Um, you can have it start your project, you can uh, you have it generate a, uh, a, a spider uh, scaffold, um, and then you can run the scaffold, run the spider with, uh, by name. The, uh, the general file structure is going to look like this. Um, the uh, scrapey.config is uh, for managing deployments with uh, uh, the scrapey daemon, um, which is optional. If you're going to have a scraper running a lot, for, it's going to be deployed for a long time, you're probably going to want to look into either using Scrapey Daemon or you're going to look at uh, using Scrape Hub, which is a hosted service for running uh, Scrapey spiders. 
Um, all of your items, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit, are going to go in the various files, uh, spiders, and so on. Settings.py uh, is going to be where you configure your spiders. It's where you're going to uh, configure the order that middleware runs in. Um, you're going to configure your item pipelines in there. Uh, you're going to configure a bunch of other different things that I'm not going to talk about because this is like a really high level overview of what Scrapey can do and how it can be useful to you. So spiders. Spiders are the most important thing. Um, if you don't write anything else, you will be writing a spider. Uh, and basically what it will do is you will give it some uh, URLs to start at, um, you will tell it where it is allowed to go, and then in the parse method down here, you will be telling it what to do with the content that it brings back. Um, yeah, so a lot of your code is going to be going into this parse method. Um, you, of course, may want to break out into other methods as you see fit. But you're going to be uh, pulling things out um, or extracting things uh, from the HTML. And you can use uh, two kinds of selectors. Or uh, one would be uh, CSS selectors, which work just like you'd expect them to. Um, or you can use XPath as well, um, which can be useful for more advanced scenarios. If you're not familiar with XPath, it's a syntax for um, pulling stuff out of XML documents. Um, and because XML and HTML are both based on SGML, all the MLs, except ML, which is different, um, it can be used for HTML as well. And it can be used for some scenarios where perhaps the HTML does not have uh, clean uh, classes or IDs that are useful for CSS. Um, the, uh, the X path can be used to do more like I want this pattern of elements, if, and so on. Um, and you can use either interchangeably. You don't have to choose one or the other. You can just use them all willy-nilly. So um, oh, I forgot to do one thing on the slide up here. So one thing you notice down here is I'm doing a yield of a dictionary. Um, there are different ways you can design your parse method. You can have it return. Uh, a request, you can have it return a list of requests and items, uh, or you can make it like a generator. Um, and I find that to be most useful, most, um, I just like doing it that way. That's the way the uh, Scrapey uh, documentation, Quick Start has you do it. Um, but it's your choice, whichever makes sense for you. Uh, but you're going to be returning either or yielding uh, a collection or an iterable, more exactly, of items and requests. Um, and the requests are, if you are trying to follow links in the HTML, say there's like pagina pagination going on and you need to get the next page of results or whatever, uh, you're going to use these things called link extractors that will help you pull out URLs based on a pattern. Uh, and you can, you can use some callbacks on those as well. Um, if you use um, the, if you subclass from the built-in uh, crawl spider, uh, which is adds a little bit, you, you can just define some rules and have them automatically apply them and go to them. Running a spider. So you've made your spider. Um, you have two options. Um, if you've just made the spider without creating a project, you're going to run uh, scrapey run spider and then the, uh, the name of your file that holds the spider. Uh, if you're in a spider, if you're in a, sorry, if you're in a scrapey project, uh, you'll use the, uh, the crawl, which uh, you're going to use the name that you gave the spider when you created it. Um, I find it's helpful to give the name, to have the name and the name of the file be the same thing, because um, that makes thinking easier. And uh, we all need that. So uh, the second thing you'll be creating are items. If you have a small uh, spider, it may not make sense to make an item, but if you're, uh, if your spider is going to be uh, larger or used in a larger project or you're going to have multiple kinds of items you want to return, you're going to want to define those. Um, and basically, it's just a class that descends from scrapey.item. And it's a lot like, uh, li a lot like Django's uh, models uh, for their ORM. And, but you know, it's just field, and that's whatever type you want it to be. Uh, and then whenever you create them, uh, it'll make sure that you can only set the right names. And that'll make sure your output formats are more consistent as well. Do you have multiple field types, or is it all field? It's all field. Um, 
but the way this works is you can set those fields, but you can't set any other fields. So if you try to set, for instance, in this case, if I tried to set, uh, I don't know, um, headers, if I just tried to set head, that wouldn't work. That'd cause an error, and I'd know about it immediately. Uh, so that's where the value of the items come. Now, item pipelines, um, these are the things that process your scraped items. So you've, you've gone through the HTML, you've uh, pulled out the data you need, you filled your item in. Now you're sending, now Scraper will send them to an item pipeline. Now these are configurable. You can set the order, the precedence, when you want them to run. Um, so they're useful for getting uh, additional resources, um, like there's files uh, that need to be downloaded in addition to the content. Uh, you can use the files pipeline that's built in. Uh, there's also an images pipeline uh, that I'll use in the demo later that will have, um, that has a bunch of options for uh, handling images as you download them and uh, storing them and making sure they stay together with the content that they're supposed to. Um, you can also use these for uh, validation. Uh, you can decide not to store an item in a, uh, in a pipeline if you decide that for some reason it is invalid. Um, you can also, um, at this point, store them into some sort of uh, format or pass them on to, say, I don't know, perhaps you have a scraper that uh, magically turns uh, uh, HTML site into an API on the other end, which would be really cool, actually. Um, you could then push these out to that service um, and do that. And uh, this here is wrong, and it was wrong the last time I gave this talk, and it's still wrong because I forgot to fix that. I should write that down somewhere. But moving on. So one of the questions that I got a lot last time I gave this talk is how can you run JavaScript? Um, because in today's world, there is a crap ton of JavaScript. And you may be running up against things like single page apps or progressive web apps that uh, they are all JavaScript. There's no content originally. It's just empty. And uh, how are you going to get that content? Or you might be running up against Cloudflare uh, because Let's face it, not everybody has enough bandwidth. Um, so uh, there, there's two, two specific things. If you're just trying to get past Cloudflare, um, there is a Python package that can be used with Scrapey. Um, in fact, if you Google it, it's the first answer on Stack Overflow. That's how I found it. Um, it's called Cloudflare Scrape, and you can integrate that uh, with your requests, and it'll just uh, it'll do the necessary delays or whatever so you can get your content easily. Um, if you have to use uh, single-page applications, uh, Scraping Hub, uh, again, the organization that kind of developed Scrapey, uh, has this, uh, this splash uh, setup that uh, can run them for you. Uh, it's running in a headless browser. I think it's Chrome. But it's all contained in a Docker container. Um, and they have, set, they have instructions for uh, hooking it up to Scrapey so that it's, uh, it's real easy to use. And you can specify how long they need to wait for the whole page to load. And, do its thing. Can you explain what is it about Cloudflare that causes issues for those of us that are unfamiliar? Well, Cloudflare is a it's a it's a kind of CDN um, that you point your DNS to Cloudflare, and then you have Cloudflare point to your actual web server, and it will go and get your content and cache it on all of its endpoint nodes around the world. Um, so if your server is hosted here, say, in uh, the northern Virginia uh, region, or I guess, that is, I guess that would be the North American region of AWS, and for some reason you're not using Amazon CDN solution, uh, because that probably costs money and Cloudflare is free, um, you could then have that content available in Europe, uh, Australia, uh, South America, and your content's going to be close to whoever's uh, trying to get to it. Um, it also helps for uh, uh, distributed denial of service attacks because Cloudflare obviously has huge pipes and they can handle that influx. Um, and there's also paid plans to kind of miti mitigate that as well. Um, but it's a real easy way to provide some extra uh, uptime to your service, some extra oomph uh, with uh, very little cost. But uh, one of the things that we will run into uh, when scraping things is Cloudflare tries to prevent uh, bad things from happening to people's websites, and a poorly configured scraper could do those bad things, like denial of service. 
So uh, sometimes it will throw up a page um, and we'll insert a delay uh, with some JavaScript uh, instead of uh, serving, the ca serving the page that was requested. And it'll make it wait, and then it'll do a redirect. Uh, and the, uh, the Cloudflare, uh, Cloudflare scrape module will uh, correctly handle that so that uh, you appear as a good citizen to Cloudflare, which is on a lot of websites. I, even I have websites on it. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, it's something to definitely pay attention to. Um, deploying spiders, I mentioned before, um, you can use your own instance of scrapeyd or scrapey daemon to uh, host that. I'm not going to talk about that tonight. I just want to let you know that those options exist if you need them. And moving on. We've moved, move on. All right. So the reason I learned this is I have a friend who has other friends, and those friends have problems. And my friend finds people to fix those problems. And uh, in this case, he came to me to fix this problem. Uh, there's a uh, guy over in Italy um, who has a website and has been filling it with content for years. Um, in a, uh, it's, a, it's a static site. Um, let's see if I can pull it up here. Oh, there it is. Nice little site. Um, no content management. Um, the guy's not really a tech savvy guy, so it's getting a bit much to uh, to uh, work with. And he's got a lot of content in here, a lot, a lot of content. Um, but for all it is, it's it's actually the HTML itself is in actually pretty good shape. So I knew it would be a good candidate for web scraping, and I had come across Scrapey at work, uh, working on an unrelated thing, and I knew this would be a great opportunity. Um, so uh, extracting the, uh, the sermons was a bit difficult because there was, uh, while the structure was clean, it didn't have a lot of classes or IDs that made pulling things out easy. Uh, so I used XPath, like I mentioned before. It's good for those situations uh, where you have a repeating kind of structure, but there's no names that you could really easily pull stuff out of. And XPath lets you uh, cope with that really easily. Um, uh, the uh, there were a lot of media files uh, along with the uh, the uh, sermons that he has on there. So I used the uh, file pipeline to uh, handle downloading those. The, uh, the file pipeline is basically you fill out a property on your item called file URLs, file underscore URLs. And then uh, when the item reaches the item pipeline, the files pipeline, it'll then go and download those URLs, uh, stick them in a folder of your choice, and then it'll fill out, the, in, the, in another field, it'll fill out uh, which files were downloaded and where they can be found on the file system. Um, for this project, I chose to output the uh, scraped uh, data into a JSON file. Um, and it's uh, really easy to do that. I will show you uh, how uh, when we get to the demo, or maybe it's probably when the demo. And uh, basically, it's. It's just straight. It's really straightforward. To output JSON to CSV um, or whatever format you may really need it in. All right, now to the demo. So let's see. So um, uh, I'm just going to show you. Um, I've already set up a, a virtual en environment for this. Um, if you're not using virtual environments, um, they're a really great way to keep your projects separate, uh, keep your dependencies separate between projects. Um, if you need a version of one library for one thing and a version of li one library for another thing, it keeps your project separate and also helps avoid uh, polluting your uh, operating system uh, libraries as well uh, with the stuff you're working on. It's all around a really good idea. Um, so I, I use them for all of my stuff that's, I don't do any, I'm not actually related, I don't work on the, uh, the virtual environment project, but it is a really great, uh, really great practice to use. Um, all right, so I'm going to install Scrapey 
it's uh, you just install it with pip, uh, nothing fancy, real easy. And I already have it. That's good. All right, so and now I'm going to I'm going to start my. Uh, Going to uh, start my project. Start it in this folder. All right, so it's uh, it's created our project here, uh, and so now we need to uh, create a uh, spider. Um, the uh, the MacBook went to sleep. I don't know if that's going to affect the recording or not. Um, so we're going to run scrapey gen spider. Uh, let's call this uh, let's call this uh, quote spider because we'll just call it quotes. All right. Oh, I forgot to give it a name. Uh, now, um, uh, quotes two scrape is a uh, is a uh, website that has been built for uh, for testing uh, scrapers and crawlers uh, what have you um, to allow you to uh, experiment and play with um, and basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to implement a uh, a uh, real easy uh, spider that will uh, scrape these quotes out of here and uh, put them into a JSON file. Uh, so let's see, let's get into our spider here. So there we go. All right, so uh, as you can see, it's uh, configured a lot of stuff for us already. Um, we have our, uh, our starting URL already there. We have the allowed domains, and we have the, uh, the uh, name that we're going to call this with. So what we're going to do is we're going to start uh, in our parse method. Uh, the response that we're going to get is going to be this, uh, this HTML page right here. And so we are going to need to get this, uh, this quote body here. So one of the things that you can do, actually, can I switch to, um, you know what, never mind. Um, one of the things that uh, you can uh, do is you can, as you see, we have the, uh, the text of the uh, quote here. And uh, it has a nice class here that's going to make it really easy to pull this out. It's got the, uh, the text. So what we're going to do in our parse method is we're going to use the response uh, response parameter. We're going to use a, a CSS selector, and we're going to do dot quotes, or sorry, dot quote, and uh, that'll give us semicolon. Used to drawing C sharp. Uh, that'll give us a list of uh, quotes and so on. And um, we'll just uh, call this quotes. And then that's going to be a list of all the elements that are quotes, which is going to be each one of these, uh, these boxes here. So does that map to DOM elements? Or? It does. Yeah. It does um, with the... Uh, uh, the, the response, uh, the CSS selector, or XPath, as you will, um, is going to pull out the elements from the, uh, from the uh, parsed HTML. All right, so we have our list of quotes now. We're going to pull out, we're going to uh, loop through uh, going to loop through our list of elements here, and for each quote, we are going to pull out the uh, 
the uh, caps lock on. The title and uh, actually we need uh, need to grab the text pseudo element and then we're just going to extract uh, actually extract first uh, because there's only going to be one element and we just want that element instead of a, uh, a list of elements so that's going to be our Gonna be our title. And then we're going to yield a uh, dictionary. We'll call it, uh, we'll just call this title. It'll be, all right. So we haven't forgotten anything. Uh, we should be able to now do scrapey crawl quotes and have it run. All right, looks like it finished. Um, but you notice it didn't output any. Uh, it didn't output any data. So let's have it uh, output JSON, and we're going to put it into. Actually, we just need to put uh, quotes.json. And we'll run it again. All right, now we should have a file called uh, quotes.json. Oh. oh, that's interesting. I didn't notice the site had a title of a, of a text attribute. Oh, right. That is right. Well, let's go back to our uh, spider and correct that. Sorry, I would have spoken up, but I thought uh, maybe you knew something a little, a little more about the site than I did. Well, you'd think I knew what I was doing. I practiced this, but we all have our bad days. Call that text instead because this is indeed the text of the quote. Uh, quotes do not normally have titles. So um, let's run that again. Again, we finish. Uh, and uh, you can see down here we have the thing. Uh, one thing to note is that. Uh, um, subsequent runs don't erase anything that's already in the file. So if you want, if you want your uh, data to be just the stuff you most recently scraped, you should uh, should remove that file before you run your uh, crawler, your your spider. And now you can see we have uh, all the text of the uh, of the quotes on that page. Um, thing is. People like to get attribution for the quotes as they made. Um, they also like to know when they hear a quote, who made the quote, because you know, if it's George from down the street, the quote doesn't mean so much as if it's from you know, Albert Einstein. So uh, we should collect these uh, authors as well. So let's see. This looks like this is class uh, author. So let's modify our uh, spider to grab the author as well. So, uh, in our list of uh, quotes, we're just going to dot author. And that's going to be text as well. All right, and now let's add this to our item, our author. Let's 
let's run that. Let's uh, move our quotes and run this again. All right, looks like that was successful. And we can check in our quotes. And there we see we have our author as well. So now we know uh, who made the quote um, and uh, what their quote was. Um, but uh, we might want to give uh, the people that we are uh, handing these, this quote data over to, uh, they might want to know, uh, for instance, they may never have heard about uh, oh, Jane Austen or something. So there's a little about link. Uh, let's, let's save the, uh, the link as well. So let's inspect that element. All right, um, looks like there's no class for this one. Um, but, and we're also gonna need the, uh, the href um, for that link. Um, so let's head back to our, um, our spider and see if we can't uh, uh, grab that uh, link there. Looks like we are under quote. Looking at the tags under there. Okay. So we don't want to get the tags because those are also the uh, the A element. Looks like we need to get uh, uh, the uh, the span and then the A. That looks like that should grab us our. Uh, our element the way we want it. So let's see here. Let's call it the about link. And from the quote, we will do a CSS. Um, we we're going to do a span. And then directly inside that span, we need there to be an A. And we want to get the href attribute. Um, and we need to extract the uh, first item. So we'll do a oops. All right. So that should get us the the uh, about link for the, each of the authors. And there we are. We'll look in the quotes file. And ah, yes, we can see that we uh, we have gotten the about links, but. You notice that they are relative links, and what if the data got a hold? Somebody uh, down the line got the data, but didn't wasn't told the uh, the URL where the data come from. They wouldn't be able to use these links. Uh, so let's fix that um, using the uh, using the uh, URL lib uh, URL join function. see here. So we'll just do about link equals uh, here. Oh, first we have to, we should uh, import it first. We're going to import uh, actually from URL lib dot parse. Uh, note, I am using Python 3 for this demo. Uh, so um, the same function exists in Python 2, it's just in a different place, and I don't remember exactly where that place is. So, uh, just so you know. Um, but uh, from url.parse, we're going to import uh, url join. Do you know when Scrapey became Python 3 compatible? And because I, I remember I looked at it like a year ago, I felt like it was not yet on Python 3. I don't know. I don't remember. Um, I know that it is. Um, all the stuff I've done with it has been on Python 3. Um, I know that it works with both of them, so if you're in a Python 2.7 environment, uh, it will work for you there as well. Um, so 
your, uh, your options are not limited in that respect. Cool. Um, so we're going to do a URL uh, join. Uh, and we are going to take uh, response.url, which I believe is the URL of the, which would be the URL of the, uh, uh, the page that was visited, and we're going to join it to our about link. All right, that ought to do it. Let's see. Yeah, so it looks like it. Uh, oops, Let's go back and look at our quotes here. And yes, you can see now that uh, that uh, the uh, the uh, URL is now uh, absolute, and anyone who gets their hold on can find out where we got these. Um, there was one more thing I was going to do. Um, just ah yes items so um, I already have a uh, item that I already built for this um, and to save time I am just going to uh, bring it in and show it to you um, show you really quick how it's used. Actually, so uh, your items are going to. Oh, that's right. There was another section of that. How much time do we have? Okay. Um, are you guys interested in learning um, learning how to use the uh, the pipelines to download images from like a e-commerce kind of style site? Okay. Um, so we have the uh, the quote item um, that uh, uh, can be used uh, with the quotes. Um, obviously, we'd have to add the uh, the author uh, link. Uh, to that, we'd uh, we just do, uh, or was it, it was an it was about link. Uh, so items are things that you can yield as an alternative to straight up dictionary. Yeah, okay. yeah, you can use these. Um, um, and uh, they uh, they make sure you have a uh, structure that's like if you have multiple spiders and they're all returning. Uh, the same items, you can ensure that they're all uniform uh, using items. Um, it's kind of like making a struct or something. Yeah, um, pretty much. Uh, it's just... Anyways, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's gen a new spider. This will be books. Scrape.com. And uh, so this is the uh, the quotes page. It's uh, pretty simple. Uh, but if we go to books.toscrape, uh, you can see that uh, it is a, uh, it's kind of an e-commerce e kind of style site. Um, it has uh, book images, it has book titles, um, it has prices. Um, lots of great info there that you might want to, I don't know, store for some reason, um, maybe write something that uh, tracks the price of your favorite book and buys it immediately once it uh, drops below a certain price threshold. Um, lots of great things you could do with this. Uh, so let's write a scraper for it. Uh, we're going to want to, uh, we're going to want to get a list of all the books. Uh, we're going to want to get their uh, full title. Uh, and uh, uh, for kicks and giggles, let's get their image as well um, because we might write a nice interface uh, that allows us to uh, visually decide which books we want to uh, put on our watch list. 
All right, so let's uh, go look at our new spider that we just created. It's going to be in books. All right, so set up uh, pretty much the same way. Uh, the thing, new thing we're going to do here is we're going to uh, import our uh, book item. So we have to recreate that. So we can uh, use that. We just uh, do it a, a relative import. From item. Import book item. I think your file was book item. Ah, yes, it was. All right, now we have our book item. So let's take a look at the uh, the markup here. What does this look like? All right. So, all right, that looks like a book. Looks like that's uh, in a class called Product Pod. That should be fairly useful for pulling this stuff out. So first, let's get uh, a uh, list of books. Um, from response CSS uh, dot product pod. All right, that's going to give us our list of those items, those uh, document nodes, those nodes in the uh, HTML. And we're going to want to pull out the title. Now, if you notice, the, uh, the title is here on the link, but if the title is longer, um, like this one, it's not all the way there. Um, and if we, uh, if we look at it, uh, we see that the, uh, the text of this link is the shortened form, but the, uh, the title attribute for that uh, link actually contains the whole thing. So we're going to want to get that and not the actual text of the link. That was a uh, hiccup I ran into when I was first running through this. Um, so uh, for uh, book in books, title is going to equal book CSS. Let's see where the, uh, where the books end up in. Another cool thing you can do with uh, Firefox is if you right click in the uh, dev tools, if you right click on the element in there and you can go into copy, you can actually pull out the, uh, the CSS selector or the CSS paths as it may be, or even the X path. So if you're doing this kind of thing uh, with Scrapey and you're using Firefox, uh, Firefox really makes it really super easy uh, to figure out how to grab a particular element. Uh, it does suffer sometimes, from, well, a lot of times, uh, from being too specific. Um, so you may need to edit a bit. Um, but I'm going to use the XPath here, version here, um, just so you can see it used. All right. So as you can see, it pulled in uh, a fair bit too much. So the article element is the uh, is the, uh, the the product pod thing up there? So we're going to just uh, because this is relative to the uh, to the article. Actually, we're going to just cut that off. And let's see. Um, let's see. We need to. Just real quick here. Uh, uh, there we are. I have to remember uh, how we get the attributes out in XPath because I've forgotten. Which um, my uh, hotspot still running? There it comes. As you can see, the, the documentation really is, uh, is really quite good. 
Um, and uh, for all the questions you might uh, you might have, uh, it's going to be a really useful uh, resource for you. Okay, looks like we need at href. Okay. A slash at href. And we're going to. You want the title though. Ah, that's a good point, yes. Yeah. So instead of href, we're going to get title. And we will extract the first one. And then we will yield a uh, book item. And we're going to set title equals title. All right, um, let's uh, scrapey run spider books and let's have it output to books.json. See if this works. File not found books. Oh, right, it needs to be sp scrapey crawl. Run spider would be if you didn't have a project and you just wrote a, uh, a spider in its own file somewhere. But inside of a project, you, we can use crawl and just refer to the spider by name. And, oh. That's right, items is one level up from spiders. Uh, it has scraped, so let's go take a look at uh, books.json. And we're null again. Okay, to save time here, I'm just going to going to reference, I just use CSS, what a surprise, should have just done in the first place. Alright, so I'm just going to replace that with the CSS version, we run this again. Books. All right, now we're grabbing the tiles. Okay, now we can start to do the. Uh, now we can start doing the uh, the interesting things. Let's go back into our scraper. Um, so, the uh, title was not the only thing we wanted to grab. We wanted to grab the uh, image and the price. So, uh, let's grab the image first or sorry, the, the price first. Um, oh, it looks like that's in a really easy place to get to. Um, it's got two classes uh, that are uh, right there. Um, so let's head back to our thing here and we'll do price equals uh, book.css. And that was in that was in uh, product price and then price color. Okay. And that's just the just the text right there. So we'll extract the first first one and we will put it in here with all right now if we run this again ok 
Okay. And voila, we have the prices now. Awesome. Now it's time for the tricky bit, which is getting the images. And for this one, we are going to use the uh, image pipeline. Uh, but first, I need to make sure I have a uh, pillow, which is required. It's a Python image library. It's required uh, because the image pipeline uh, can do some thumbnailing, some resizing, give you multiple uh, different sizes. We're not going to use those tonight because that's a little bit more complex than I want to get into. Um, but let's just make sure I have it. I do. Awesome. All right, let's go into the uh, Go into the settings file. Now there's two things in here that I'm going to need to set. Uh, one is the uh, oh dear, what have I done? is unfortunate. Ladies and gentlemen, my editor has frozen. Ah, there it goes. All right, so um, I'm going to let's see. So, all right. Uh, Let's just uh, grab the name for the uh, oops. I'm going to use the image pipelines or pipeline, not pipelines. So grab that and we will. Dot. The pipelines. Dot images. Dot images pipe. Line. And we're going to make that. Uh, Priority one, uh, the lower the priority is, the uh, more recent, the, the higher precedent the, uh, the pipeline will have, uh, so keep that in mind. The, uh, the images pipeline also has a uh, second setting that you will need to uh, uh, set here. Images store, you'll need to set that to a uh, directory of your choice. Um, that directory will be Uh, relative to where you are, to the uh, working directory that you run the uh, uh, scraper from. Uh, so keep that in mind. Name that right. I did name that right. Almost right. And I'm just going to put it in book images. So that's set now. So um, if we look at our items file, I've already set up the book item to uh, handle the, uh, the image uh, pipeline. Uh, basically what we'll do is we will fill in the image URLs into uh, this field uh, right here. And then the images pipeline will download the images in there. It will save them in a file that is named by the SHA-1 hash of that file. So if it was, if the SHA-1 hash was, you know, 25 of a particular JPEG file, it would get saved in 
uh, books, uh, book images slash 25.jpg. Um, so, uh, and it will then fill in this, uh, this images uh, field with the, uh, with the uh, file location uh, and the uh, other attributes of that, uh, that image. Okay, so go back to the uh, back to the spider. So now we need to uh, let's see. Let's find where the image is in the HTML. Okay, it's got its own class, so that'll be really easy to pull out. Uh, we're gonna be looking for a thumbnail. And the image uh, URL is in the source attribute, so we will get that as well. We will get, that's the only thing we'll get. All right, so image URL equals .css do, do, do. And we're going to get the thumbnail class. And we're going to get the source attribute. And we are going to strike the first one of those as well. Um, if there were, say, a group of elements um, that you wanted just to select all of them in a single go and you wanted to extract something, you could also use extract all, which would give you a, uh, a collection of those uh, items. Um, I just got my, uh, I just, in, the way I usually do it is I just grab this, uh, whatever the, uh, the highest level element that I want and then I, uh, for each of those, I pull them out. Um, you may decide to do things differently, like you might uh, you might pull each of them out all in one and build a collection of items and just return the collection. Um, I find that the the generator style is really easy to think about um, in this way. Uh, you may have your own preferences, and those are just fine. Um, uh, Scrapey will work with either way. So this is the image URL. Um, unfortunately, it will also suffer from the same problem that we had before with the uh, with the about author link. Uh, so we will again uh, in, uh, from URL lib dot parse. We'll import URL join, and we'll just do actually. Uh, image URLs equals um, yeah all right now if I've done everything correctly Yes. Um, if you had multiple images uh, per item you wanted to do, you would do that as well. Um, in the uh, the case of the uh, the uh, uh, crawler that I wrote for my friend, um, each sermon had like three or four uh, different media types that went with it. Um, so I used the file pipelines, and there were multiple URLs in that collection. Um, in this case, there's only one uh, cover image per book, so we will just uh, store those. Uh, as a single item, that collection, that list. Is it images pipeline that is dictating that you need an images URL? Yes, that's URLs where it's going to look. Entry. That's where it's going to look for the URLs to download. Um, if you don't fill it out, it won't know which images you want. Um, so that's uh, that's a convention over configuration. Um, if you don't like that, I suppose you could write your own image pipeline to do it differently. All right. Now this is going to take a little bit longer because it has to download the uh, the images for this as well. Uh, looks like that was successful. It didn't complain, and uh, yes, it looks like we have our images here. So let's 
with the books at JSON, uh, look at this. So the, the ones up here are from before, um, the one that we did before. And down here we have our title, we have our image URLs, and if you see over here, um, we eventually get over to it. Uh, it has filled out the path. Uh, this is a relative path to our images store that we set before. So let's see here. It has created the, uh, the directory for us. And these are full size images. So you see we've got the uh, uh, full thing of images here. Um, So you can see we have our uh, book titles have all been downloaded um, with our items, and we can uh, we can do with them as we will now. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's a pretty good overview of what kinds of things you can do with Scrapey. Uh, once you have the data, uh, really the sky's the limit as to what you do with it. Um, I recommend that uh, you only, uh, that you do not uh, scrape websites that uh, their owner has requested you not to, um, because that's just good netiquette, uh, just good thing to do anyways. Um, there are people who use this for bad purposes. I recommend not doing that. Um, but um, on the other hand, uh, you are like another web browser, so it's not wrong for you to do this either. Um, just uh, always be sensitive to other people's content, um, which I'm sure you all, all know about. And let's see. So Scrapey, I presume, has an ability to descend and to actually, so you, you, what you showed in your example, which is great, was an ability to scrape a single page. Mm -hmm. And extract information from a single page. Right, yeah. At some point, I would think a crawler wants to take links that it then finds and descend into them. So the mechanisms for doing that, is that you writing multiple spiders uh, to that hand off between, or, or are you expected to write a spider with more logic, or is that the structure just entirely um, up to you, or does Scrapey have guidance for like, if you need to do something more complicated besides single page scan. Yes, it does. Um, it has, uh, you, can, uh, you can pull the uh, links out yourself um, and return a request. So in the generated example, um, I might uh, uh, get the list of books, run through all the generators, and then uh, do some link extracting on my own. Or what I could do is I could subclass from uh, crawl spider. Um, if you uh, may have noticed, um, so I can just pull this up here real fast. Uh, the uh, spiders I was doing tonight were all descending from uh, scrapey.spider. Um, scrapey has some other uh, base classes that you can use. Uh, one of them is crawl spider, and you can uh, set a uh, class uh, property uh, called rules. And then whenever it gets a, uh, whenever it uh, goes through a request, and uh, uh, loads the page, it'll run the, uh, these things, these link extractors, uh, which uh, look for URLs that match the, uh, the patterns, or alternatively don't match a certain pattern that you set, and then it will automatically load up requests for those uh, to be processed next. Um, the other option is you may uh, there may not be actual links on the page, but based on information you scroll the page, you may be able to infer a link that you want to go scroll. Um, so you can build a URL and then return a request instead of an item or a list of requests from your spider, or you can return a list of requests and items. Um, any kind of iterable containing items and requests is legal to return from the, uh, from the parse method. And uh, any requests that are in there will be uh, passed to the uh, to the engine that goes and downloads, and the responses will come back into your uh, parse method, unless you set a different callback, in which you will go to that. Cool. 
Any other questions? All right. Um, some resources for you uh, if you want to explore further. Um, Scrapey.org um, is the uh, website for Scrapey. Uh, the docs are uh, doc.scrapey.org. That'll send you to a nice read the docs uh, page, and it will have uh, lots more info. That's where I got a lot of the info for this uh, for this talk. Um, if you like those that uh, original diagram in the beginning, uh, you will find that diagram there. If you want to look at these slides again, you can see them on my website at lucy.rehack.me slash slides scrapey. Um, I may even throw up the, uh, the demo bit there if you want to uh, download that, use that as a starting point. Uh, probably put it under MIT license or something. Uh, thanks, you guys. It's been a great audience. I enjoyed uh, presenting. Thank you. Thanks for coming out. Yeah.